what is up YouTube and welcome to another video. If you're totally new to Kubernetes or you've worked with Kubernetes before, you would have come across Kubernetes YAML files. Now to interact with Kubernetes, we use YAML files. There are multiple different ways with dealing with YAML files and complicated ways such as Helm charts. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a much simpler approach for bundling simple Kubernetes YAML files with a tool called Customize. So without further ado, Let's go. So Kubernetes allows us to describe our infrastructure and our application as YAML files. So if we take a look at the Docker development YouTube series, I have a complete guide on Kubernetes development. If you're new to Kubernetes, please check the links down below to the Kubernetes guide. Basically, we cover everything in Kubernetes, such as deployments, config maps, ingresses, secrets, services, stateful sets, and even persistent volumes. Now, if you're new to this channel, everything I do is on GitHub. The source code is down below. I've put a link in the description so you can follow along. The first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the readme file in the customized folder under the Kubernetes folder. This has all the steps that I'm about to showcase today. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the traditional way of applying YAML objects to Kubernetes. And then we're gonna take a look at what customize does to help us improve this process. So if we take a look at the very basic way, we normally use the kubectl apply command to deal with yaml files so in the basics here i have a couple of yaml files i want to deploy i have a namespace a config map a deployment and a service and if we take a look at the customized folder i created this basic application folder so this is the very basic traditional way of applying objects and deploying them to kubernetes so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the namespace namespaces are very simple they just have a name now namespaces allows us to group objects together it's a great way for your company to split out different applications between different departments as well as separating um, infrastructure such as monitoring components logging components or maybe even your ingress controllers so we take this command and we run that we say kubectl apply that's going to go ahead and create the example namespace now our application is going to need some config in order to function so for that i have a config map if we take a look at that a config map is just a configuration file that your application might need so to deploy that i'm going to say kubectl I'll apply and I'm going to apply that config map to the cluster. Then we're also going to take a look at a deployment. Now deployment is a way for us to describe our application um, to Kubernetes. So Kubernetes knows how to deploy and manage our application to keep it up and running. So for that I have a deployment file we say created also in the example namespace. We want to run two replicas. We're running a, an example Python application and we give it a port and we also mount in our config you can see here. And to deploy that we're simply going to say kubectl apply and we're going to apply that deployment file that's going to go ahead and deploy that guy into our example namespace which is going to give us two example app pods now to expose this application inside of kubernetes we're going to create a service a service is a way to expose applications in your cluster either privately or via a load balancer so if we take a look at the service.yaml we can see we're creating an example service in the example namespace and we're creating a type load balancer so that means because kubernetes is cloud native kubernetes knows how to provision load balancers wherever it's running so i'm running docker for desktop here meaning that it's going to create a virtual load balancer so i can access my application over local host so to deploy that we're going to take a look at the readme file and we're going to grab the yaml file and we're just going to go ahead and apply the service now there's another way we can apply this if we take a look at the kubectl apply command it basically takes a file as we've noticed here but we can also apply an entire folder so sometimes this is good enough to say let's just apply the entire folder and that folder becomes our package or our chart or our template or whatever we want to call it for some people this is good enough if you don't need any kind of complicated um, templating and parameter injection you can just happily take a file yaml file or a folder and just apply it to deploy your infrastructure so to check what we've deployed we can just say kubectl in the example namespace get pods we see we have two pods running and if i do kubectl get service we can see we have our service running it's exposed over a load balancer and if we take a look at the browser we can see that we have our application now running in Kubernetes. Now in all my videos where I deploy things like HashiCorp 
Vault, Argo CD, and Jenkins, you see me just basically apply a YAML folder by saying kubectl apply dash F. That is because it's easy to digest, easy to read, easy to follow and understand. Now, many people ask me, why don't you use Helm charts? And to be honest, in all my experience with Kubernetes, you don't need complex abstractions, complex template rendering, complicated nested templates, and all of that complexity. It just makes it much harder for people to understand, read, and follow and digest it. It also makes it much harder to upgrade and maintain your systems. In many of my scenarios, I would much rather copy paste YAML than trying to make a super generic template that's going to be hard to maintain, hard to understand, and hard to upgrade. A lot of the times when I do CI CD pipelines, you see me do something very basic where I say cat a deployment file, pipe it into said, I replace the image tag, and then I pipe it into kubectl apply. That is because simple applications like microservices don't need complicated template and rendering, especially when you're only wanting to replace an image tag when you're doing deployments in a CI CD environment. So I always recommend to try and stick to the very basics. Just use kubectl where possible. If you do need something more complicated, then move on to something like customize. And if all else fails, then look at more complicated template uh, rendering engines and try to keep your YAML files and folder structures flat and simple. So Customize introduces a template-free way to customize our application configuration file. So we can take our deployment YAML that we have and we can keep it untouched. And then what we can do is we can introduce um, little patches like patches for development, staging, and production, and then apply that with a tool called Customize and deploy that to our Kubernetes environment. So I'm gonna show you how we can keep these YAML files intact and unchanged and just apply the necessary changes that we need for development, staging, and production environments. So to start with Customize, we need a customization YAML file that describes what we want our bundle to look like. So to do that, in our customize folder, we're going to create a customization.yaml file. And it's very, very straightforward to start. We just say we want the resources and we list the resources we want to include in our bundle. So I'm going to include all the YAML files that we have in this application folder over here. Now, since a specific version of Kubernetes, the customized binary has been included in kubectl, which makes it really easy to use. So if we take a look, um, the way we can do it is we can say kubectl customize and then pass in the name of the folder that we want to customize basically or we can say kubectl apply minus k that's basically going to run the customized build process on that folder produce the yaml and then apply it so we can say kubectl apply dash k and pass in that folder and when i do that we can see we've created the namespace the config map the service and the deployment so we've done exactly the same thing as kubectl apply but this time we've just used customized to do so. Now, how do we do something a little bit more complicated? Like, let's say we want um, to run two pods in development environment, but we want maybe four or six pods running in production. For that, we use a thing called overlays. So if we take a look at what overlays are, we would basically take all those resources we have, and that would become our base. And then what we do is we introduce an overlay for dev and an overlay for production. So when we apply our customized file, we say we want to use development, and then it will apply it to the development environment. And if we use production overlay it will it will patch in the production patches so to do that what we're going to do is move our customization yaml into the application folder i'm going to go ahead and do that and then obviously we have to change the paths so what i'm going to do is just remove the application folder from here and now we've basically turned this application folder into our base so it has a customization file and now what we need to do is introduce our overlays so what we can do now i'm just going to call it environments but you can call it anything you want since i'm going to be having two different environments in here I'd like to call it environment so it makes sense and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder um, inside here called development and production so you can see now I have a development folder and a production folder and now we can put new customized templates inside these ones and define what we want to change on the base template so to define our overlays what I'm going to do is create a new file inside the development folder called customization.yaml and I'm going to do the same thing for the production folder so we create two customization overlays now inside the customization yaml for development i'm just going to specify what base i want to use so you can see here we're pointing to the folders up which are our um, application customized file and then same thing for the production i'm also going to take this base 
and I'm going to go ahead and paste that there. So basically all we're doing now is we've specified a development and production overlay for our base customized. So now to apply that, all I need to do is say kubectl apply dash K and I can apply my development customized template. And when I do so, all that that's going to do is going to look at the base and it's going to apply it. So how do we make changes to our development environment and production environment? So let's say we want to run more pods in our development environment. So if we take a look at the base application deployment YAML, we can see that the replica specified here is two. So let's say in development, we want to run four pods. What we will do then is we'll go to the customization YAML here, and we're going to firstly add a new file called replica count.yaml. And then what I can do inside that replica count file, I can apply the patches that I want to apply. So any kind of change I want to make, I can apply it here. So in this case, we tell customize we want to make a change to the name example deploy. So it will have to match the name in this deployment YAML. And then we say we want replicas for. Then we also need to go and tell customize about this replica count file. And we do that by going into customization.yaml and we add the th a thing called patches. So we have add a patch to point to the replica count.yaml. So now customize will know to apply this patch to the original base template. So now if I go ahead and apply that template, we can see that our um, deployment has been configured. And if I do kubectl get pods, I can see we're now running four replicas. Now let's say in production, I want to run six pods. So for that, I go to the production folder. I create a new file called replica count.yaml. And then inside that replica count, I just say, I want six replicas for the production template. And then what I do, go to my customization.yaml and I'm going to go ahead and add the replica count for that one. And then if I go ahead and say kubectl apply and I apply the production customized build this time um, we can see now we have applied it to the deployment yaml and if i do that we can see now we've got six replicas coming up the other thing i may want to do is say let's put some resource limits in production that's not in development so for that i, I might want to create a new file called resource limit and then in this file i can go ahead and say i want to apply resource limits to the specific container so i'm going to go ahead and save that and then i'm going to go to the customization yaml file and i'm just going to introduce this extra file that we've created in here. And then what I'm going to do is say kubectl apply minus k and go ahead and apply that limit restriction. So you can see that overlays are a great way to patch existing YAML without having to change that base YAML. Now there is still one problem with our base template. If we take a look at our application YAML and we take a look at the config map, we can see that we still have a config JSON that's tied to our development environment. So ideally we want every environment to have its own config. Now Customize has the ability to generate configs um, from files, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our production environment and we're gonna add a new folder called config. So we have a configs folder. And then in here, I'm gonna create a config json and in this config.json i'm going to say environment equals prod now how do we get customized to use this config that's very simple so we just go to our production customization.yaml file and then we add this thing called a config map generator so we tell customize to target the example config and then also in the namespace example and the behavior is to replace that config with configs json file that we've defined in this folder so this is a great way for customize to be able to change configs for different environments. So to apply that, I just say kubectl apply dash K and I apply the file. And now we can see that it's gone and configured our config map. Now, if we want to take a look at that config map, we can say kubectl get cm. We can take the name and then we can specify the name and I can say output it as YAML. And if we do that, we can see it's taken effect. So it's gone ahead and replaced that config map um, in our Kubernetes environment. Now, the customized tool has a lot more in-depth and advanced config generators, and which applies to secrets as well. So if you want to take a look at more advanced examples, you can come over to this document over here where they take a look at a lot more advanced techniques and things you can do. Now, what if we want to inject some environment variables to our pods in our deployment? Customize also has this capability to do strategic patch merging. For that, let's say I want to add some environment variables. What I can do is I can go to my production uh, customized uh, base and I can say add a new environment.yaml. And then in this YAML, I can specify exactly what environment variables I want to add. So in this case, I want to um, target the container called example app and I want to add an environment var variable called production. And you can do 
do the same thing for referencing config maps and secrets as well. Then to make that take effect, we're going to go to our customization.yaml file and we're going to go ahead and add that. That's going to tell um, Customize to do a strategic merge into the base deployment. So if it's there, it will update it. And if the value is not there, it'll go ahead and add it, which is quite a cool feature. So that's a good way for patching and merging values into our base templates without having to change the original YAML file. A lot of the times we, we are not able to change the original YAML file because they might be coming from other vendors. So to do this now, to apply that um, patch, I'm just going to say kubectl apply-k and I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the production. And we can see now deployments has been taken effect. So to take a look at that, I can say kubectl get deploy. And then I can go ahead and grab that deployment and say type output as YAML. And if we scroll up, we should be able to see that it's gone ahead and injected that environment variable into our deployment. Now, another cool feature that Customize allows us to do is let's say we have a deployment pipeline and all we want to do is change the tag of the image to our deployment YAML and we don't want to go and change the original deployment YAML. So if we take a look at the base application deployment YAML, we can see we're running Python and application version 1.0.0. Now, we don't want to change this original YAML. So that is where Customize allows us to patch that using the images field. So to do that, all I need to do is go to my my customization let's say we want to roll out a new version to production we go to our customization yaml file and we add the images field and now we can say we want to target the specific image in our deployment so if you have multiple deployments with multiple containers you can target specific ones using this and we say here that we want to apply a new tag 1.0.1 so to apply that all i need to do is say kubectl apply dash k and that'll go ahead and roll out the new deployment if we say kubectl get deploy and we add output that as YAML, we can scroll up and we can see we've rolled out um, Python 1.0.1. So this allows you to use customize in your CI CD pipeline and just change your tags to do rolling deployments. Now it's important to understand the default behavior when it comes to Kubernetes and config maps. When a deployment consumes a config map, the pods that are associated with that deployment will only consume the config map at the time the pod is created. That means if someone goes later down the track and changes the config map, the pods that are still running will not pick up that new config map until the pods are deleted and recreated. So the same thing happens to customize. So if you take a look at our base template we have a, co a config map.yaml and we're targeting an example config in our customization yaml for production we only override the config from a um, from basically from a config map generator here but because we're targeting an existing config um, in the base application that means customizer is not going to manage that configuration so if we do kubectl get pods we can see our pods were created four minutes ago and if i go to this config in production and i add Let's say I add a new value called hello and and let's say I go and apply that. We can see that the config map was configured. But if we take a look at the pods, the pods are still running. The same pods are still running. So they haven't been recreated automatically. So how do we get customized to manage our config maps? So if we want pods to consume new config every time we recreate the config map or change the config map, we're going to need to use the auto rollout feature of the config map generator. So to do that, what we're going to need to do is we're firstly going to need to go to our base application config map and we're going to have to remove that config map altogether because we want customized to generate and manage our config map instead so we do that then we go to the production customize.yaml file and we remove the behavior of replacing config map because we're not targeting an original config map anymore we want customized to generate a config map on the fly using our config map generator that we've defined here so now if i say kubectl um, apply and I go ahead and apply that look what happens customize will go and create a config map with a random hash behind it it'll also mount that config map into the deployment if I do kubectl get pod we can see that a new pod has just been created okay so if I go to my config now and I change this value to a new value and I go ahead and save that and I go ahead now and and apply that using customize apply we can now see that we've created a new config map. So every time we make changes to the config map, um, Customize will regenerate a new config map and um, it will go ahead and volume mount that into our deployment. So you can see a new config map was created and also 
a new deployment was configured. So to double check that, we can say kubectl get deploy and we can output that as YAML. And if we take a look at the config map mounts, we can see that it's now mounting a volume to the auto generated config map. So this is a great way for CI CD pipelines to automatically ingest um, configs every time they change. So the developer doesn't have to go and restart the pods manually. So these are the most useful features I've found of the customized tool, allowing you to keep your YAML files very simple and give you the flexibility of applying patches to different environments, making your YAML files portable without the complexity. Now this will give you similar features to tools like Helm without the unnecessary complexity. Remember that templating can often become really complex and is often not required. So I hope this video was informative and useful and let me know down below in the comments about your YAML experience and also what sort of topics you'd like me to cover in the future video. And as always, like and subscribe and until next time, peace.